Hello, and welcome to Emmanuel Church Rio Rico's online virtual worship for October 29th, 2023. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we are at a time where the violence that surrounds us seems overwhelming and, and impossible to deal with. Uh, and yet, Lord, we are not even in, engaged in it. It's, it's people around the world suffering from violent and horrible attacks. Meanwhile, Lord, we see people who are going hungry, and going cold, who are dying from lack of medicine, dying from uh, the necessities for life. Uh, Lord, I, I pray that you will step in and intervene, that you will bring peace in the midst of conflict, that you will bring hope in the midst of despair, that you will feed the hungry, that you will clothe the naked, and Lord, that you will use us to do that, because that is what you have called us to do, to make sure that those who are in need are cared for. Give us loving eyes and caring arms to reach out to those in need. Speak to us this day, Lord Jesus. Be our teacher, be our guide. As we pray in your precious and holy name, amen. Calling today's message, You've Got a Friend, which of course is a title of a, of a song from back in the 70s, but it's really what this short passage from Luke is talking about. We're still looking at Jesus addressing the, the large crowd that had gathered, but he's specifically talking to his disciples, and he has a special word for them. One that doesn't start off very cheery at all. So, first of all, count on opposition. Luke 12, 11 says, When you are brought before synagogues, rulers, and authorities, do not worry about how you will defend yourselves or what you will say. Now, this is not a particularly comforting word. And the reason I say this is because Jesus uses a word here uh, hot and my, my Greek is not very good, so my apologies for poor pronunciation. But it's a word that specifically means when. It doesn't mean if or in case. When Jesus says, when you are brought before synagogues, rulers, and authorities, meaning it will happen, he was telling his disciples that they were going to face persecution. And they were going to face prosecution as well. Because that's what the, the synagogues, the rulers, and authorities would do. They would prosecute them legally. And he's telling these, these followers of his, who were mostly people without a great deal of education, and certainly with very little public speaking uh, practice, that they were going to have to defend themselves. But he says, don't worry about it. Now, we will see Jesus go on to greater lengths talking about why we should not worry. But this is one specific thing. He says, don't, don't worry about that. When it happens, you don't need to worry about it. And you don't need to worry about what you'll say. Now, growing up uh, in a Southern Baptist church, I went through all kinds of witness training, and this is, this is what they would call it. And it's training you to be able to share your faith, share the good news with other people. Now, I, I don't mean to say that this is a bad thing, but I'm saying Jesus says that we don't need to worry about what we're saying if we haven't had extensive training, if you haven't been to Bible study classes, if you haven't been to seminary, if you haven't had ex a great deal of training, even still, you do not need to worry about what you need to say. And just so you know that this is not something that was just a, you know, maybe could happen, not long after Jesus' crucifixion, resurrection and ascension into heaven uh, Peter and John find themselves in trouble they, they healed uh, a lame man as they went to the temple to pray and 
Uh, in Acts chapter 4, verse 1, we read, The priest and the captain of the temple guard and the Sadducees came up to Peter and John while they were speaking to the people. They were greatly disturbed because the apostles were teaching the people, proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. They seized Peter and John because it was evening. They put him in jail until the next day. They had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them. By what power or what name did you do this? So you see, this was not just a hypothetical case Jesus was talking about. He knew what would happen. Uh, believe me, this is no surprise to the Lord. He was fully aware of what was going to happen. And so he was preparing his disciples so that when it did happen, they would be prepared. They would be ready. And they knew in their hearts and through personal experience that they would not have to be eloquent speakers, great lawyers, great defenders. They simply had to trust in the Lord. And that's, that's what he says. Don't worry about it. When it happens, you'll know what you need to do. Why? Because the Spirit will teach us. In Luke 12, 12, Jesus says, For the Holy Spirit will teach you at that time what you should say. You see, worry is, is about us trying to control what's going to happen. We don't have control over it, but we want to know what's going to happen, and we want to plan for it, and we want to make sure we're in control. And Jesus tells us, don't worry. The Spirit will teach us at the time what we need to say. And we see that in the same story we were just looking at in Acts 4, where Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, says to them, the, the rulers and the elders, rulers and elders of the people, and then goes on and begins to tell them in great detail about how Jesus is the Messiah that was promised throughout the Old Testament, even though they would reject him, that he was God's son, and that salvation is found only in him. And when they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished. And they took note that these men had been with Jesus. You see, even though they weren't really able to prepare for what was going to happen, because it's not like they knew they were about to be arrested, and it's not like they had time to research and prepare a, an effective defense like we would think of doing now, no, they were fairly uneducated. They were fairly simple. Peter and John had been fishermen when Jesus called them. It's, they had not been to uh, even the same kind of training that rabbis went through. They were untutored, as it were. They, they did know the Bible because all, all Jewish men had to learn the scripture. That was part of your bar mitzvahs to know and understand the, the Old Testament. Uh, as we call it now, what they would have called the Torah and the Law and the Prophets. But what, what this shows us is that they present a highly effective defense because God's Spirit leads them to it. Because you see, the Spirit of Truth is our advocate. Now, an advocate uh, can mean several different things. In, in some cases, advocate is used to mean someone who guides people through difficult times that are unable to do so on their own, that do not know how to do it, and an advocate advocates for them, helps them, speaks up for them, gives them uh, the, the ability to, to get what they need. But advocate can also mean, honestly, legal uh, representation. An advocate could be your, your lawyer hired to represent you and defend you. And our advocate is the Holy Spirit. In John chapter 14, verses 16 through the first part of 17, Jesus says, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The Spirit of truth. This is not just... Uh, an ability to deal cleverly with words. It's to give us the truth we need to deal with difficult situations. And it is the Spirit himself who does that. And the Spirit remains with us. Now, 
the Holy Spirit, we, we see throughout the Old Testament, he frequently uh, inhabits and motivates and uses men throughout the Old Testament. I mean, the Spirit would come upon certain judges, on certain warriors, and certain prophets in a way that gave them uh, extraordinary abilities. Uh, for instance, in, in Joshua, Joshua in Numbers 27.18, Othniel in Judges 3.10, Gideon in Judges 6.34, Samson in Judges 13.25 and 14.6, and Saul, um, the, the first king of Israel in 1 Samuel 10, 9, and 10. However, the Holy Spirit departed from Saul because of his disobedience to the Lord. And we see this in 1 Samuel 16, 14. You see, the gift of the Holy Spirit that we as believers in Jesus Christ we have is a permanent, irrevocable gift. He is with us forever. He abides in us. He lives in us. We are his dwelling place. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit because he inhabits us. And it is he who is with us at all times to guide us through any defense we might need, any help we might need. We are never left alone. The Holy Spirit is always with us. So whatever we come up against, whatever happens to us, whatever uh, opposes us, we do not need to be afraid because we have a friend. And that friend is the Holy Spirit who is with us no matter what happens. And that is some good news. Let's pray. Speak to us, Lord. Speak through us. Give us the right words to say no matter what we face. Use us, Lord Jesus, to make your good news known to all who need to hear it, including our brothers and sisters sometime. We pray this in your precious and holy name, Lord Christ. Amen. God bless you and go in peace.